You're going to love what we have for you today. We're going to be talking about how to paint your furniture. Hey, and welcome to the Pink Tool Girl Studio. My name is Sandy, and I will be your host each week for a show that details DIY home improvement and home decor projects where we can find out how to get the right tool for your project. Hey, this is Sandy. This is Hannah. And we are bringing to you part of the paint series. We're going to be talking about furniture paint. Live from the Pink Tool Girl <laughs> studio. I told you she will paint anything. Anything, people. Microphone painted in gold. What so can we say? Get ready, because you're going to be amazed at what all you can paint furniture was. And this was actually a friend's idea. I didn't even do that, but I would steal <laughs> the idea, and you can steal ours, too. Um, and that is spray glitter paint. So, yes, you can. This is the music room. So we, we have... Um, we have titled each one of our rooms um, for the theme that we did. So this is our music room, uh, which if you see behind me, this is my, what I call my showstopper. Um, I did a blog piece, I think three or four years ago now on yeah. it. Ugliest piano you've ever, ever seen. Ugly, ugly, ugly. And a um, little bit of paint, maybe four hours of work. Voila! Totally changed the idea of the entire room. So let's talk about furniture paint. So here's the deal. I yeah. came into your home and the first thing I saw was the piano and I thought, oh my word, she painted a piano. I and did. as a musician, I'm just kind of like, is that heresy or not? And when I looked at it, my brain was, my eyes were telling me no, my brain was telling me yes. So yeah. not only piano, but what can you paint? Or maybe the better question is, Sandy, what can't you paint? <laughs> What haven't I painted um, in the home? Well, first, let me say I am also a musician. I'm a piano teacher, music teacher by trade, and um, I didn't know what I thought too about painting a piano. But when I had gone through my Pinterest page years ago and saw all the old pianos, I thought, you know what? It was not that expensive a piano, and it was already ugly. Really, paint could only do it better. justice or better, you know? So I would not be painting my Steinway if it were in here or my, you know, beautifully new minted off the line piano. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't paint that personally. Sure. But um, for some of these junky pianos, and there's so many pianos that are like on the market for people to sell. Yeah. Paint it, give it new life, give it a new, you know, room to sit in. And um, let's see, so your question was, I know I just kind of went on the rampage with the piano thing, but I wanted to make sure. Um, and I just got a, a person from England asking me about it. So we are going to do a video tutorial of how I did this and, um, you know, have fun. So you asked me what furniture. Okay, so let's go through my house. Um, I have a table. I have a chair over here that I've painted, mm -hmm. legs and back. I've painted a table. I've painted my cabinets, two sets of different cabinets. I've painted a hutch. I've painted bookshelves. You've painted, one thing that really shocked me was bed frames. Oh yeah. Uh, just for, bed frame furniture in general, dressers. Oh, yeah. uh, her fireplace in here is painted. Yep. Um, not only the mantle on the wall, but the brick is really neat. And that's a whole idea for specialty paint mm -hmm. um, because I've had so many people come in and say, I hate my stone or my brick or whatever. And I was too afraid to do it in one of my houses before. Mm -hmm. I hated the stone. And when I came here, I was like, eh, <laughs> I don't know. This is like my trial house of, you know, what can't I paint? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's really many surfaces other than maybe like, um, I've even painted metal. I was trying well, to think about that. Well, I was going to say, well, metal, but I think my favorite story and my favorite thing that I never thought you could paint from Sandy, <laughs> and we all know when someone challenges us and says no, Sandy oh, yeah. here is going to rise to the challenge. So tell them <laughs> about your big piece that went from yet from lemon to not even lemon, some ugly yellow to avocado. Oh, <laughs> I forgot about that one. Okay. Yeah. I painted a refrigerator, um, in our old home. Um, it was a 1950s ugly yellow refrigerator. And my husband assured me that they could not be painted and, um, that if, even if I did, I should have used spray paint was his idea. Mm -hmm. And, um, he wasn't looking and I had the roller paintbrush and we were doing like a texture wall. Um, you know, these are the things you do the week after you get married. This is what we were doing the week after we got married. We were insane, crazy. But anyhow, um, so while he wasn't looking, I went like this and I painted the front of that ugly, we were so, we, we just weren't, 
we weren't ready to buy a, I won't say we were so poor. We weren't right. so poor, but we didn't want to drop down a thousand dollars after you know, the week after our wedding. <laughs> if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's right. But if it's ugly, we need to fix it. Painted that refrigerator. Um, and it lasted eight years. Uh, it never chipped, never looked ugly. And it went from a horrible yellow to a, just a nice neutral cream. So what's it's funny fine. to me is that you did say about um, rolling on it. Now, mm -hmm. when I think about furniture, one thing that scares me is, okay, you can't use a roller on some of these details, or how do I, what tools do I need to actually paint furniture to make it look good? I know that's important. Absolutely, and at Pink Tool Girl, we're all about finding the right tool for the project. So for paint, depending on what you're gonna paint, you do have to take into consideration what paint brush you are going to use. So. If you're going with, um, let's say, chalk paint, mm -hmm. so this is like the Annie Sloan chalk paint or the folk art chalk paint that you can get at Joanne Fabrics or something, um, they have a special brush that um, it's it's uh, it's got a little handle and then the bristles are a little bigger. I'll show you a picture of it. And it kind of soaks up the paint okay. and allows you to do a big surface. So this, and there are, I think, I think Annie Sloan, I don't know for sure anymore, but Annie Sloan and Amy Howard, those are two of my favorite chalk paint people. Um, their price is a little higher, but it's worth it in the, the makeup of the paint. Sure. They each have their own brush. Okay. And um, they have like a small, a medium, and a large. Okay. My hands are kind of small, so when you can use a big paint brush, to me I tend to use the next one down, just because I like to be able to maneuver it, mm -hmm. and my hands are small. So chalk paint has a certain type of paint brush that you would use with okay. it. Um, if you're doing a specialty paint um, over here, um, and it's a metallic, uh, I often will use a long bristled craft brush. Okay. Okay, I also have, I have, I'll, I'll try to take some pictures. Mm -hmm. I have mason jars of all the different brushes that I have. It's actually a really good idea. And then to just label the jar so you're not confused or you know this is what I bought this for and know you have the right tool for the job. Exactly, so it's bristle length, bristle thickness, and the stiffness of the bristle. So um, like when you're gonna use a stencil, you want to use a stiff bristle that's small so you can get inside of those plastic pieces. Mm -hmm. So each type of paint that you have, um, I don't say that there's a right or wrong, but sometimes if my paintbrush isn't quite doing it, or especially like on the brick, that had some porous. Sure. So I wanted something a little stiffer so that my bristle would and get I was in there. About like how it holds the product and everything like that, that's a big deal. So exactly. I mean, we consider all these different types. So is there a special care for them or is it just rinsing out my brush? Do I need any? Uh, if it's wa water soluble paint, which are all of your latex paints, uh, most of your specialty paints, I would say, and don't quote me on this, but almost all things but like stains or those oil-based paints. Oil, okay, oil is a big deal. Right, okay. those take a different, um, like a cleaner for it. Okay. But if it's water base, always make sure you suds it out, and this was one of my teacher friends, she would always say this, if I can paint on your pants and you're confident that it's clean for it not to get paint on your new jeans, then you've you've washed your paintbrush correctly. That's actually a really good point. Yep. Because I'm not sure my art teacher would have been I know. Pleased. <laughs> so you, because if you leave even just a little bit of the paint in the bristles at the top or at the bottom, and again, like I'll hold the paintbrush both different, both ways, so it drips out and then it also gets kind of in, mm -hmm. um, because it can ruin your good paintbrushes. Okay. And um, my Annie Sloan paintbrush was like a $40 brush. Okay. You know, so, and now some of the cheapo ones, you know, like there's like the disposable kind, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I tend to wash even my disposable ones mm -hmm. because I paint so much and I want I don't want to always have to go out and buy another one. Mm -hmm. But I think you really need to watch cleaning your tools and taking care of your tools because once you paint something, you're going to paint everything. I, write in, tell me. We had such amazing information in this episode that we decided to make it into two parts. So stop by next week and we'll continue on painting furniture, your ideas, your inspirations, and getting your DIY groove going on.